In the last problem, we saw what we need to do if, um, it, whenever we have a, a decimal as our divisor. Well, what about whenever we have something that looks like this? Again, a fraction is really just a division problem, so we really need to write this properly. This would be 3.1 divided by uh, 0 .006. Now, I didn't put the zero in front of the decimal. You can if you want. It doesn't really mean anything. Now, my divisor is not a whole number. So in order for it to be a whole number, we would have to move this decimal in three places. Well, if we're going to move this decimal in three places, we have to balance it out by moving this decimal three places. So that's one, two, three places would be right here. Now, because I had to move that and we didn't have any digits in these spots, I have to fill that in with zeros. And now I can line up my decimal and I can begin dividing. So we're going to ignore these zeros at the beginning. 0, 0, 006 is just 6. So now 6 will go into, thir it won't go into 3, but it'll go into 31 5 times. 5 times 6 is 30. Let's do the subtraction. That'd be 1. We're going to drop our next digit, which is a 0. 6 will go into 10 1 time. 1 times 6 is 6. When we subtract, we get a 4. We drop our next digit, which is 0. 6 will go into 40 6 times. 6 times 6 would be 36. And when we do the subtraction, 40 minus 36 is 4. Now, we're not done. We have a remainder, and when we deal with decimals, we don't talk about remainders. But we're out of digits, but that's okay. We can continue adding digits as long as we want to. We can keep adding zeros. If I add a zero here so that I can drop that down, now I can continue on. Six will go into 40 six times. Six times six is 36. When we do the subtraction, we get 4. I can add another 0 so that I can drop it down. 6 will go into 40 6 times. 6 times 6 is 36. When we subtract it, we get 4 again. I could add a 0 and drop that down. 6 will go into 40 6 times. 6 times 6 is 36. We could keep going like this forever and ever. Now, the reason that I added these three zeros was basically because it said for us to round our answer to the nearest hundredth. Well, the nearest hundredth is this position, two spots after the decimal, two places after the decimal. So in order to round to this position, I have to go one more past it so that I can see whether I need to round up or leave it alone. This tells me that I'm going to round this number up. So for my final answer, this would be 516 and 67 hundredths. So if it tells you to round to the nearest whatever, you have to keep going until you are one digit past there so you can see what you need to do with the rounding.